Fortunate, really. Remember a similar shot from Isura Kahandavala in that 2017 game where he decimated Royal in the first quarter. But these are the things that go your way when you're in the D, in good positions and taking good shots. St. Thomas is already showing some desperation in the first quarter as Lithum Karunasena adds to his tally. An easy goal for the centre forward. Shows a lot of ease and fluidity when he swims. Absolutely no effort in his stroke at all. And manages to get Royal 5-0 up. I'm sure the coaches will have a word with him when you say no effort in his stroke because <laughs> that's a big no-no when it comes to the centre forward. But really, showing a lot of talent in this young age group. Uh, worth to note... Well, to note, Chanaka, that the Royal Under-17 team had just beaten the St. Thomas's Under-17 team 14 goals to nil two weeks ago. Um, shows the amount of work that the juniors have been putting in after that real demoralizing scoreline from last year. But, but this is the, the trend we see in Heyman's. For two to three years, each school will dominate and play really well. Quickly taken again by St. Thomas's, but once more Bari to the rescue for Royal. Finding a nice long pass as well. Very accurate pass once again. And that's a good snapshot from Suleiman Shihar, who has been really creating havoc down this right wing. He's been defending well. And clearly, the swimming speed and stamina of this Royal team is far outweighing its Somian counterparts. Shihar has been outstanding, as has the man in the center of your screen there, Lithum Karuna Sena. St. Thomas's need to change something up here, Shanaka. They, a timeout is a good option, especially with two minutes remaining in this quarter, just to settle the boys down, give them a break, and then reassess their game plan. Looking lacking, for the prop. Lacking a bit of imagination here, Reza. Nice turn. From Migama that time. Looks like a strong player. And there was an exclusion. So St. Thomas's will have the opportunity to score in this first quarter if they use this exclusion well. It is a penalty, so there was a pullback from Ramiru Alutge, who has the unenviable task of being the prop marker. And Vasi Haran will try once again. And he's second time lucky. This time, Bari is just unable to get anything substantial behind it. And Vasi Haran not repeating his original mistake and getting St. Thomas's finally on the board. And that will settle their nerves somewhat, even though the lead is still substantial. Good to see Dinal Velipili having a good word with his goalie. These are the little things that count in the matches when you know that your teammates got your back and they're willing to put aside the mistake you made later to make, to make that a correction and make it a goal on the other side. Royal now will aim to consolidate and see out this quarter. Try not to concede another goal. So that's another off-the-ball incident and uh, Lithum Karunasena again showing really quick hands and a really quick head as well. Prop marker sent to the bin. We, saw, we didn't really see exactly what happened but that's the nature of water polo since 95% of it is played underwater. So St. Thomas's really need to be du double marking Lithum Karuna Sena. He looks to be the danger man there in that center pocket. I guess one of the issues that they will have is because Suleiman Shihar has also s contributed so much onto the score scorecard on that awkward wing. That was, the, that was the usual defender that you would drop to support your prop. So maybe drop the center marker down onto the bar and then the bar defender down onto the prop marker. Royal once again bearing down on goal. Nice little fake with the eyes as Dinal Velapili adds to his tally as well. And Royal romp out into an 8-1 lead. 
Last year, Shanaka, worth to note, 97 goals were scored between the first leg and the second leg for the under-15 and the under-19 games. So really, if you're in the Sugat Dasa, you're going to get your money's worth. And really, this is, this is a real spectacle of sporting showmanship by both teams ready to put this show on. Technical skills that really have gone up a notch, I must say. As Migama opts to pass and St. Thomas says this time, get on the board through open play. Nihilash is the one who profits with his left hand on that right bar. Good pass from Migama who drew both defenders to him and had the presence of mind to offload. Excellent shot and really uh, good value for St. Thomas for having the left hand on that wing as well. Good youngsters in the making. We spoke about Argus Zuhair so many years ago and then he came back to haunt us in that 2022 game. But really good to see from St. Thomas's. That was Pereira who managed to get a hand to it. The goal judges say that it was a goal, do they? And yes, they do say it's a goal. So I think they will come back for the centre pass. We thought that Pereira had got enough of a hand on it to keep it out. But if more than half the ball crosses the goal line, then it is counted as a goal and that's exactly why you have judges sitting on that goal line to make sure that that's what happens because there's no VAR available here. I'm sure the Tomian goalkeeper would have done well if not for the scorecard, um, Shanaka. It's a bit of pressure telling on them as well and this is how score lines can suddenly become very different and it does, doesn't reflect the ability of the team. Nice reach from Bari again. And again, he finds the open man, some e really good distribution from Bari. And again, St. Thomas's find themselves a player down. As this time, Albert is excluded. Off the bar it comes. And it is the end of the quarter. St. Thomas's will be quite happy that that quarter has ended. It was uh, an abject thrashing for them to say, to put it mildly, nine goals to two is how it has ended in the, at the end of the first period of play. There'll be three more of these. And unless St. Thomas's can get their act together, it's going to be a long afternoon for them in this Mind the Leonegay Trophy. The 30th annual Dr. R. L. Heyman encounter for this coveted trophy between both Royal and St. Thomas's. As you all know, the DS Senanayaka Shield for the cricket match is uh, probably the most prestigious and the most coveted, the Gunaratna Trophy for the rugby match also. And perhaps after those two, it is the Dr. Heyman Trophy that is the most prestigious trophy on offer between Royal and St. Thomas's. So there'll be just a talk of more of the same Reza in the Royal Huddle, but what do St. Thomas's do from here? St. Thomas's need to regroup. Uh, this is just the first quarter. It's a new team coming in already. Uh, we will have a bit of assistance from the Papare team this year on stats as well, so bear with us if we get a few of them either way but it's to to uh, for the for the viewers at home to understand what we are talking about as well the papare team tell me uh, royal college have a shooting success rate of 80 percent and st thomas's have a shooting success rate of 20 percent so that is something that they will need to work on to work on that st thomas's need to form the d there's a nice headwind here coming in as well so they can use that to their advantage and really take the long shots as well when they are on offer well, this is going to make life a little difficult for goalkeepers, uh, Reza. And it will be the Tomian goalkeeper who has to face this sideways barrage of rain in the first quarter. As if he hadn't had enough shots raining at him, he's got to face the actual physical rain as well. Not as bad as taking some booming kicks at the Mount Lavinia Rugger Grounds, I'm, sh I'm sure, Shanaka, but... Uh Nonetheless, additional uh, variables to contend with and uh, a good experience for this young team playing in different conditions. Royal by far and away the superior swimming team. That much was obvious in the first quarter. So if they are to combat that, St. Thomas's will have to try and slow this game down. 
get the ball into their center forwards, maybe, maybe even think about playing two center forwards and get Royals defense, especially the dangerous Karuna Sena back into the back of the pool as much as possible so that they have time to recover if they turn the ball over. Nice advantage of the left-handed uh, Nihilash on the right wing. But so far, as far as right wingers go, it's Suleiman Shihar in the number 11 cap for Royal that has really done the damage. Rain is uh, coming down pretty fast and hard now. The referees have gone and changed into the little rain ponchos. But what this does is it makes the visibility a real problem both for the players and the referees. As you can see, you can barely see the lane markings now with the rain spattering on the water. <laughs> but such is life in the tropics. Looks like Royal will be the first to the ball this time, even though the wind has carried that ball a little bit onto the Thomian side. Looks like Royal have made a few substitutions and Ovindu Kaluarachi comes into the right wing. And Royal spread the ball nice and wide. St. Thomas is with the exclusion. Are now restored to their full complement. And that time Pereira, D.E. Pereira, grabs the ball. Nice to feel it in his hands. He didn't have a lot of that in the first half as we see St. Thomas is through Vasiharan, who scored their first goal. Swimming it down, but nice shot taken that time by Nihilesh. The left-hander seems to have his wits about him, Shanaka. Danger man, really. Royal don't need to allow him into the shooting zones. They allowed Yomal Bolagala and Ake Zuhair into those shooting zones last year, which we are still having nightmares from. And if they are quick to learn, they will want to shut out this Stomian attack early in the second quarter. Nice save from Pereira that time. That'll do his confidence a world of good. It's uh, never pleasant conceding nine goals in a quarter as Migama now bears down. Think about the pump shot and uh, it might be a penalty. Or an ex definitely an exclusion, but we'll see what the referee says. Yes, it looks like it is a penalty and Vasiharan will step up once again in the number 10 cap to take this penalty from five meters out. So the rule is that uh, you sit on the five meter line directly in front of goal and it's just you and the goalie. It's one to Bari, one to Vasiharan so far. Goes for accuracy instead of power this time and Vasiharan puts St. Thomas's back within five. It's eight goals, it's nine goals to three. Is this the Thomin comeback we are seeing, Shanaka? Two unanswered goals, really. St. Thomas is making full advantage of that break and the extended rain break as well. So good to see momentum shifting and the game being played evenly now in this second quarter. It's such a fast-paced game now, Reza. Anything could happen at any point. As with most sports, it's all about momentum, winning small movements and starting well. So Royal this time suffering an exclusion. And uh, space for Nihilesh and he goes to the far corner. He's got a sure left hand. Nihilesh on that uh, right wing and coming into the right bar. So he gives himself a nice angle. And Bari this time having a word with his defender saying, please don't leave me exposed like that. Yes, we spoke about Nihilesh before on his first attempt. He's proving us right up in here in the commentary box. And I'm sure we'll give a lot of satisfaction to that coaching staff. It's always easy to, to keep mounting on the goals, Shanaka, when you're leading. But really to come back from behind will show a lot of character and a lot of determination and the quality of a side as well, which we are seeing in St. Thomas's now in this second quarter. But really, Royal need to form that D, do the basics right, get the ball up into the two-meter from that right wing and probably put Suleiman Shia back in the pool. I think he is back on. He uh, never left, I think. He's just changed uh, positions. Here we have uh, Ramiru Alutge or... That, that is Shihar, who takes a quick snapshot. 
And this time they seem to be finding the goalie with their shooting rather than the corners of the net which they found in the first quarter. Looks like the rain might have just upset this Royal team a little bit. Nihilesh again with that uh, left hand looking for Megama. Ball under is the call from the referee because the Tomian cap number 11 had his ball on the hand, had his hand on the ball, I beg your pardon, and then the Royal attacker seemed to put the ball under. It's a good time out taken as well from Royal College. They'll want to stem the flow of these goals and then go back to the game plan that they uh, adopted in the first quarter. So for those of you who are new to the rules of uh, water polo, ball under is when the entire ball is submerged by the player in possession. And uh, what's interesting also is that if your opposition player has the ball in their possession, then a defender can stick their entire hand on the attacker and make him put the ball under the water. And it still would be a turnover to the defender. Not sure if I confused you even further by saying that, but... That's exactly what was done to Migama. He had the ball in his hand and the Royal Defender made sure he submerged the ball. So it's good defensive tactics. St. Thomas is now within five. Coming back from a nine goals to two first period deficit. Five minutes to go in the quarter. Royal looking to form the D and feed their prop, their danger man. So two number fives battling in that centre forward position. Vikramasinghe got turned around there, and it will be a penalty. This time to Royal, which Dinal Velapili will step up to take. So St. Thomas's can have two defenders on that shooting line, Sharnaka, um, because if the ball bounces back into play, it is play on. And you are allowed two defenders either side of the shooter. I'm surprised they have only one. They've chosen to have just the one defender there. Well, if you are going to get wet, you might as well be in the pool, Reza. These boys will be the driest at the Sukhadadasa Stadium here as well. Lapili converts and uh, puts his team into double figures. Dinal Velapili emulating his coach Omira Lokuge from that famous 2018 win for Royal College where he was calm and collected at the same end of the pool and at the same corner. So good to see the coaching structure being put in place and these boys de delivering when it is required. Looking for their right winger again. Trying to really good work from Karuna Sena. Dropping back from the bar attacker he was defending and just helping out with the double team. Good sense as well. Lapili now gets in front of his defender and will force his defender to create... Or make a mistake, which he does, and they, I think they will come back for yet another penalty. Good drive in from Royal College. Uh, like we said at the beginning of the first quarter, Dinal Velapili is known for drawing those exclusions. So, really, St. Thomas has just need a defender to swim with him. That was uh, way out from Velapili, just as we were saying that. Uh, he shoots well, pulls that well wide of the left crossbar. He'll be upset with that, not to even be on target. So on the replay of these matches, they will know that Dinar's favoured corner is that is the right-hand net. Little things to pick up on and really areas where players can improve. We want to see these players improve and represent Sri Lanka at the highest level. So really, that's why we're playing these games and having all the game footage and all the backing that they need to do that. Bit of confusion again. The rain can't make communication at all easy between the 
players and the referee and of course the signals can sometimes be not very visible either substitution called by St. Thomas's you can see the near side referee signaling that and it looks like Gunavardhana will go to the bench and coming back is Albert So finally we're underway after the administrative chaos has been settled and Vasiharan on this left side bar crowded is Migama even though they choose to give the ball to him it is an exclusion and once again it's Nihilash with that left side left-handed shot that they're looking for the Royal defender if you watch him number seven heading down towards the bar that's the standard operating procedure, but just couldn't turn around in time. He yeah, should have been going backstroke there and then uh, treading water with his hand up, protecting that corner. Cardinal mistake there by the defender. The goalkeeper needs to have a word with his defence there. So 10-5, far more respectable for the Thomians at this point than it was at the end of the first quarter. As Royal go along now. And Pereira watches it sail beyond his crossbar. Distribution from Bari has been much better than Pereira's. Far more options available for Bari. And once again, St. Thomas is losing that ball under absolutely no pressure. Turnover Excellent is turnover. a call. Migama will look for... That is a good turnover that time by the Royal Defence, Gisat Fernando, doing brilliantly. What was a precarious two-on-two -two position. So two examples of ball under where Royal earned a turnover and then St. Thomas has earned it back. Well, Apili goes across the pool. It's long passes, a little difficult to deal with in this kind of weather as Gisat Fernando now. Looks for his centre forward. Karnasena with the shot clock. Finds the arms of Pereira. So really Litum just needs the ball into that reach of the palm. He shouldn't be stepping out to, to reach for it. If he's one-on-one -on -one with the centre marker, you need to feed him the ball as soon as possible. Royal were guilty of that many times when Savinda Di Sanayaka was the prop. But also when you have strong props, sometimes you expect them to do all the work, Shanaka. All part and parcel of learning for that crucial under-19 game that these boys will be playing next year. So a timeout has been called. I think we'll come back for the penalty, Reza, if it was indeed a penalty. It wasn't. see it here on the replay thought that Megama did get fouled there and it will be an exclusion but the Thomian possession with two and a half left In this uh, quarter, St. Thomas's to come within. It's a bad pass to Vasiharan, really slowed down the attack. And Vasiharan trying to find some space between all three defenders. But uh, Vikramasinghe couldn't get the shot away. Vikramasinghe has been a little slow today. And Karna Sena with a nice ball in front of Vela Pili. And a beautiful goal taken by Dinal Vela Pili. Comes back and shoots across his head. 
and Pereira has absolutely no chance. What a goal from this right-handed uh, bar player from Royal College. Show, uh, signs of Shevan Ebenez. I remember when he out, when he sm absolutely smoked Samo Singh on that counter-attack. Similar kind of goal he scored. Pushed back and then took the f uh, shot at the left-hand corner. They're looking for me, Gama, but unable to find him without conceding a turnover. And Karuna Sena now looks for Shihar and Shihar scores. Pereira took a gamble coming out to try and meet that ball in front of Shihar. But Karuna Sena's pass was a pinpoint one. And Royal now have three goals back to back. Which means they're going to a 12-5 lead. Another commanding seven point lead, Reza. Yes, and also... It's all about man management now, uh, Shanak. I'm sure the adrenaline would have dropped a little in this second quarter. We saw Litham Karuna Sena tiring out a little. Lucky to have the luxuries of someone like Suleiman Shiha on the wing where he can just pass and then expect the workload to be done. Nice turn and shoot that time by Pereira. But again, Bari is safe between the sticks. Under pressure immediately is a Thomian receiver, Nihilesh. St. Thomas is getting quick ball there, really, but Litum Karunasena shouldn't have allowed the goal. It's such an easy pass. And they make them regret that move. Litum could have pressured the goalie there, which was my thought exactly when I saw the pictures previously. But if you give St. Thomas's easy ball on the four and the three meter, they will make you pay for it. An excellent conversion there by St. Thomas's College. Nice lob by uh, number three, Albert. Fake nicely and release late to go over the advancing goalkeeper. Alut Gay looks for Ovidu Kalu Arachi. Plenty of points for Royal College to talk about in the whiteboard session in this second quarter. A lot of little mistakes which are costing them. Excellent save there by the goalkeeper, but e an even better shot. The enterprise shown by St. Thomas's College in this quarter is second to none. Well, St. Thomas's have outscored Royal in this quarter. Six goals to three. Or four goals to three. As the quarter rounds down on the last 15 seconds, Royal College bench will have their eye on it. Last 10 seconds, you should hear the word shoot, shoot coming out from the bench. 10 seconds to go. He takes the shot. Corner ball coming up. Royal College, seven seconds on the game clock. Suleiman Shihar was the one who took the shot and Vasi Haran's uh, desperate long-range attempt to try and end the quarter only finds water in front of uh, Bari, Raid Bari in the goal for all college. He has been outstanding in goal so far. So at halftime, it's 12 goals to six. It was nine goals to two at the end of the first quarter, so St. Thomas's will be a little bit relieved that it's not as embarrassing when they look at the scoreboard. Twelve goals to six, and if they keep pegging away at this Royal College lead, then perhaps they will give themselves something to play for next weekend, but that's something that uh, will remain to be seen in the second half of this game. You're with the Papare.com live in uh, Colombo, in Sri Lanka, and around the rest of the world as we watch this 30th annual Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy encounter. The under-19 game is coming up. We're at halftime in this uh, in the Leonegay Trophy game for the under-15s.
Right. Make your mark. Season 1, Tenuma. Season 2, Charita Avalia. Season 3, Krida Viplava. A very good evening. It's wet at the Sukhadadasa Stadium pool. But that will not deter the under-15 teams of Royal and St. Thomas's as uh, we join you again live on the papare.com in this Mahinda Leonagate Trophy encounter. For the under-15 teams of Royal and St. Thomas's, Royal on the right of your screen in their new and fancy white and orange caps. You must tell us about the thinking behind that at some point, Reza. And St. Thomas's on the left in their traditional blue caps the two Singaporean referees have kept a tight rein on things given away quite a few penalties for players being interfered with as a bear down and goal and we're also happy to welcome former Royal College captain Jehan Mubarak to the commentary box welcome Jehan been a long time since uh, we hung out at this pool yeah, it's been a long time when Royal play in yellow and white caps, you know that you've missed a lot of water polo. And that's so a turnover ball called against uh, Royal College for pushing off or handing off. Pereira finds Albert. Again, good defence by, aggressive defence by Vella Pili. But Albert gets it back. And now the shot is available for St. Thomas as well taken on the bounce. Six, six, six. By Pereira, KGAR Pereira. Nice lift as well, Jehan came up all the way up to his trunks. That's good technique. Yeah, both teams seem to have good energy coming into the third quarter, defending very aggressively. Finding number three wide open across the face of goal. Royal College taking up their 13th goal of this encounter. That's a nice spot from Suleiman Shihar. So Tehan Gunatilaka wide open in front of his marker. St. Thomas is guilty of not getting goal side of their attackers. The goal scorer, Pereira, will. Look to find someone open, but St. Thomas's on the attacking end, you could throw a handkerchief over most of their team. Really need to spread themselves out a bit. It's a nice pass from Vasi Haran into Migama, but Migama's ball security has not been great this entire match. It is another turnover. Referee spotting an infringement of the ball. Royal players pulling one of the Thomins by the leg. And Thomins can counter now. And that's it's another exclusion foul call on Royal. And St. Thomas is taking the opportunity to call a timeout and to use that extra man to their advantage. So it's Royal's turn now to face a few exclusions. And St. Thomas is very quickly on the bench shouting out to the referee. So once again, just to explain that if you have possession of the ball, if you gain possession of the ball, then it's your right to call a timeout if you have any available. So, timeouts, Reza, two per half per team. And also, just to bring up the stats, um, Shanaka from the last quarter, the Papare team have been very helpful in doing this for us. So, scoring percentage, Royal College 30% and St. Thomas's College 57%, which is why uh, St. Thomas's won that last quarter, four goals to three. 
but really the saving percentage also has been the same from both goalkeepers. So good to see that the defence is doing their part and then the attack is making the difference. St. So Thomas is recovering well, Jahan, from a early first quarter onslaught. Nine goals to two was how it finished at the end of the first quarter. And Royal just blitzing their way into a lead, but being slightly clawed back, but still a healthy six-goal lead. With an exclusion foul and the Thomians still waiting for the ball to come. The Thomian goalkeeper has gone all the way back to goal, so... Yes. Vasi Haran. Vasi Haran looks for Albert on the bar. Albert takes the shot. Perhaps maybe two passes too soon. Yes, and Thomas is, as you said, Shanaka, pretty tight, uh, bunched up, not making use of that extra man completely, allowing Royal defenders to double mark uh, uh, their attackers. St. Thomas is doing well to double mark Lutum Karnasena. This is where the Dean needs to form tight on that uh, perimeter line and get the ball into the three meters. Yeah, that's an exclusion against Royal College once again for taking a shot or throwing the ball away after the foul had been called. And this time St. Thomas's College. Well, not too sure exactly what the call there is from the referees. So number eight exclusion is uh, the call. And I think, Jahan, you were right. It is the Royal player who was sent, away, sent off. So players are excluded for 20 seconds for the more grave fouls. But that has led to a penalty as well because the excluded player continued to play. And Vasiharan will try to get his third goal of the competition, which he manages to get with a slightly risky bounce shot. But seemed to have found the measure of the goalkeeper as he puts St. Thomas's within six. Within five. Royal opting for a slightly different approach to St. Thomas's. Uh, not, say, not committing men in attack and now they have to pay for it as St. Thomas has counted down the right wing. Here's the left-handed Nihilesh. Does well to pass to Pereira in the middle of the pool. But can St. Thomas's through Migama get there? But outstanding work from Bari in goal, Reza. That would have made you pretty proud. He yeah, did all the hard work, but at the end... Just dragging the ball under, trying to avoid the St. Thomas's attacker, conceding the penalty after having done all that hard work. This must be some sort of record for the number of penalties conceded in a game in this Heyman. I'm not sure whether we have that kind of stat. But Vasi Haran has been uh, dangerous from the penalty spot ever since that first goal that he missed in the first quarter. Has made sure he hasn't made any mistakes since then and has been keeping the Royal goalkeeper guessing. St. Thomas have seemed to have found a chink in right bar is armory there. Left corner being favoured a lot. And if you notice, he is also heavy on that side, expecting the shot. Karuna Sena milking the penalty there. And... Uh, Seems that the penalties are not too difficult to come by in the modern game. As we see the rain lashing down over the Sukhadadasa Stadium pool. And Karuna Sen with a nice head fake, fakes left and bounces it into the right bottom corner. Well, I guess in any game, Shanakra, make it to keep it flowing, you're looking for consistent calling. So, as, as long as both teams have the rubber, the green, I'm sure they'll be happy to. I'm sure the goalies are not going to be too happy with penalties being called so frequently. Well, what it also does say, Reza and uh, Jahan, is that there's been a bit of a coaching issue from both teams and something that they haven't been expecting the referees to call, which is why there's so many penalties. 
because there's obviously something that they have been practicing which is not being allowed by this particular set of referees. So that's something they'll have to have a quick chat with the referees about over the course of the next week and address in training. Yes, very valid point. And also, if you're looking to put these boys into the Sri Lanka under-17 setup, these are things that they need to learn from. Good play on by Dinal Velapili. Looking for options now. Royals right wing, clear water in front of him. Has options of passing, looking for it. Excellent goal by Suleiman Shiha, just taking off from where he left that second quarter. But this is what you want to see, Sharnaka. Ball distribution, looking for options. You saw him just stop the shot momentarily to look for the option, which is what we want them to be considering in this kind of game. Good water pole all around. I like the way he plays, uh, Reza. He's always looking up and looking for the pass as a first option. And uh, it's a good unselfish play from uh, Suleiman Shihar. St. Thomas is through Migama. Finding a little bit of space. And once again, Velapili will uh, concede a penalty. So, uh, wow, that's not a lot you can do as a defender within the red zone. Well, both teams will need to be cautious about this because after the third um, man out, then you are not allowed to play. So the bench will have to quickly rack up the numbers to see who is in danger so that they can get through to the end of the game, Shanaka. Well, they're seeming to be giving the penalties but not the exclusions as well. As Vasiharan continues to notch up goal after goal from the penalty spot. This is uh, pretty much Christmas for the Tomian number 10. Both senior teams must be watching this game with uh, a lot of interest to see how the game is being refed. Interest is one word, Jahan. If I was the senior team, I would be anxious right now. Especially if I was on the coach's bench as Vella Pili looks to get the ball back from his left bar. And it's a good shot but comes off the crossbar. Taken by the Thomian Zudabage. Now a little bit of space opening up for the tiring Vasiharan. And again, another exclusion for Ovindu Kaluarachi and Vasiharan will go. Well, not to the penalty spot this time. And this time Nihilesha's shot comes off the crossbar. But they'll have another opportunity through Albert, who makes a great shot. Albert on the right, on the left bar. And he didn't need Western Union for that shot. Straight through to the far side. Excellent shooting by St. Thomas's College. Saw the opportunity, took the shot. That's what you want from your top bar players. And really, uh, Royal with all the mistakes there in that play. If you notice, there were three Royal defenders on that one Thomin attacker. All they needed to do was swim up the ball, keep pressuring him, pressuring him, not earn the exclusion. But that exclusion then turns into St. Thomas's goal. Good defence by the Thomians on that occasion. Migama. And again... Uh, The referee showing that you need to make sure that the ball is put back in play, obviously. Well, Pili thinks about the shot, gives it to Khalid Maujud, who fakes and shoots well. Maujud thought about bringing it back in. The defender may have just tipped that into the goal. I'm not sure if it was going out in his attempt to block it. He may have just tapped it back into the goal. Excellent shot by Khalid Maujud and excellent use of the Royal College bench now. Seniors having a lot of confidence in their team to feed them the ball and as you see double team being played. These are signs of, of good teams who have played together and as I say that I stand corrected but Royal quick to correct the mistake now. Again looking for distribution looking for Lithum on the two meter turns, shoots Good advantage being played by the referee there. Royal College attacker turning his defender, getting goal side, forcing the foul and referee playing a good advantage, allowing him to take the shot. 
and once the shot was not made, calling the penalty. Skarna Sena from the penalty spot. And uh, it's a no goal. So that one won't stand as Karuna Sena pumped the ball under the water before he shot. So lots of technical turnovers being called by the referees here, which is a good thing for those who are playing and need to improve, but a little confusing for those watching sometimes. Here's Suleiman. Suleiman Shehar smashes it into the near post. No chance for Pereira. Oh, the luxury, the luxury of having a fast swim on that right wing for Royal College, paying big time in dividends. And Litum Kaunaratna doing the right thing, keeping his head up, looking for options, using his fast men on that break. Yeah, it's important that you keep your head up as you're not going to find your extra men, even if they are fast swimmers, if you keep your head down. How many times you have yelled at us, Jan, at that Royal College pool on the basics of water polo. But so nice to see these things being done even in high-pressure encounters. Nice swim, the Royal College, number 12. And a great goal, great awareness, knowing exactly where his teammate was, using the Thomian defender as a shield uh, to block his own defender. Excellent play by Royal College. Really well taken goal. Well, Pili has been outstanding for Royal. I think there are three standout players present in this Royal team so far. Litum Karuna Sena. Suleiman Shihar and uh, Dinal Velapili in outfield and of course Bari has been excellent in goal as well. But St. Thomas's will have to do their homework on these players if they are to prevent a repeat performance in a week's time. Team effort really, Shanaka. A lot of accolades go everyone's way when the team is doing well. But really, it's the hard work done on the defence to turn that ball over. Safe goalkeeper, good long-range passes. All of that coming to fruition, really. As we have a temporary stoppage for an obstruction of a vehicle at the Sukhadasa Stadium. Good to see that everyone is concerned about each other. We ask the teams to play for each other and defend for each other. So it's good to see that everyone's looking out for each other as well. So just waiting for the ball, I think. It's a thankless task for mostly the referees here. They've got their little raincoats on, but that's not doing much, I would think. The coaches are soaking wet in their corners as well, so showing the commitment they have for this game. Nihilesh, the nice shot and first to recover as well, but Bari does well to get away and gets help from his defender, Kaluarachi. Lovely ball across the goal to Chandrasekhar, to Khalid Maujud rather. And here's one of the key figures in the Royal attack, Vela Pili finds Karuna Sena, turns his defender around again. So his technique has been impeccable, Jahan. Yeah, and he thinks he's, he's read the refereeing very well indeed. He knows exactly what he's doing. Gets goal side, lets go of the ball, draws the penalty. Good to see young players adapting to the conditions in the refereeing as well. It's something that is spoken about in even Raga and cricket. Yeah, that's a great save by the goalkeeper. Guessing correctly... Going for the bounce shot to the left bar. Karna Sena probably still recovering from that uh, last penalty which was disallowed. Tried to play it safe this time and didn't get enough behind the shot. Well, Pili. It's Karna Sena again. Lovely ball out to the wing. Not really enough of an angle to shoot there for Shihar.
St. Thomas is still with a seven goal deficit. That's plenty in the third quarter. It's a nicely taken shot by Pereira, but you can see both teams tiring. And it's probably going to be a goal fest in that uh, final period. Because the players really look like they've uh, outdone themselves in this first three quarters. Yes, and last 30 seconds in this all-important third quarter. Royal College will want to settle that D down and make sure that it's just one attack and they don't have to swim back because the fourth quarter will be coming up very shortly. And really, if I were on the Tomian bench, you'd be looking at Dinal Velapili, Litum Karunasel and Suleiman Shiha, telling your defenders, do not give them the ball. So cover the passing lanes, make sure they don't have easy ball and let the others take the shot if necessary. Don't know how much it makes a difference at surface level, but St. Thomas's with a significant tailwind will help the long passes if they choose to use them and Royal have to shoot against this weather as well. Nice goal taken by Karna Sena. Good awareness by the prop again. As soon as his outside man took the shot, he was moving towards the rebound, which shows a lot of thought that has gone into his game and good to see at a young stage. Again, a little bit of experience for Pereira in the Tomian goal, not to palm the ball down directly into the path of the attacker. It's to palm it to the side. He'll learn, obviously. Real pressure on this uh, Tomian outfit, Jahan. They're pressing from very high the Royal defence and it's been successful. St. Thomas is drawing the exclusion just three seconds on the shot clock. Royal committing men in defence, knowing that there's just a couple of seconds left in that quarter, managing to run the clock down and end that quarter with, a, with an eight-goal lead. I think there's still one more play left and it's not enough time to get the shot away. But uh, yes, it is an eight-goal lead as we go into the final quarter of this Mahindra Lianage Trophy game between Royal and St. Thomas's, the under-15 teams battling it out before the senior teams come out for the all-important first leg of the Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy encounter between the two schools in just a few moments. So don't go anywhere. You're live on thepapare.com. We'll be back in two minutes with fourth quarter action. <laughs> Fourth quarter action, St. Thomas is looking to salvage some pride as they trail 19-11 in this Mahindra Lenage Trophy game between the under-15 teams of St. Thomas's and Royal. St. Thomas is in the blue caps, playing from left to right on your screens. And Royal in their as yet 
unexplained choice of orange and white caps. Reza still owing me an explanation. They'll be playing right to left on your screens as the rain pretty much goes left to right on your screens as well. And not to name drop Shanaka, but coach Arlo Kapralis, um, who knows this venue very, very well, will have a wry smile on his face watching from the UK. But uh, thanks to him, really, to a new cap set uh, for Royal College. Um, good to know that there's a lot of support for these school teams from outside. And um, uh, really, thank you, sir, again, if you're listening to us. Um, it's making a difference. The under-13s have won their game and the under-15s are playing pretty well. So I guess the cap set helps. It's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Each team has their own superstitions <laughs> as Royal College race to the, uh, to the centre ball. Fitness definitely going to come into play in the final quarter. Reza, you were talking about mating shapes and Ds. That's all fine <laughs> at practice sessions. But in the fourth quarter over here, man, it's not very easy. Again, an off-the-ball exclusion for St. Thomas's and Meegama will go to the exclusion area as Karuna Sena looks to try and get a shot away but this time he doesn't manage to get a clean swing of the arm and Pereira who's only a wee lad in goal for St. Thomas's will be very happy that that didn't find its mark baptism by fire for Pereira in that first quarter but he's recovered well made a few good saves and Nihilesh will turn and shoot, but not under referee's orders. Excellent save by Dinal Velapili. Very careful not to give that penalty away and then earning a ball under turnover for Royal College, resulting in now Royal ball in the other half of the pool. Nathan Gunawardana swing it up to the dangerous uh, Velapili. Seems to have a lot of confidence, Velapili, with the ball at his fingertips. Migama. And that's a good bit of interplay from St. Thomas's. But again, the tired arms of KGAR Pereira as he plows along towards goal. Nihilesh, that left-handed shot, looking for it. But nicely saved by Raid Bari in the Royal goal. He has really been outstanding. St. Thomas's will be a lot closer to that 19 goals, if not for Bari. And here is the man who has made a difference at the other end of the pool. Suleiman Shihar and... Nicely lobbed in by Karuna Sena as well, showing that he can score pretty much in every fashion possible. Options for all college, plenty. Suleiman Shiha playing a different position. He seems to be playing in the bar and then Dilal Velapili as the centre marker. But really, this is where then your fourth quarter, you bring out your bench, you bring, out, bring the impact off the bench and Royal seem to be doing that. Just on a first viewing, Reza, the Royal team seemed to be a lot bigger physically than the Somian side. And that really is showing, especially in the physical encounters in the centre-forward position and with the reach of the goalkeepers. Karna Sena again, milking that exclusion. He's been really smart in how he's done this. It will be a penalty, so Suleiman Shihar will be the man who takes it. Karuna Sena abdicating his position as the penalty taker for his teammates. Nice to see. And uh, Shihar makes no mistake. Excellent shot by Suleiman Shihar. But again, Litum Karuna Sena going forward, I think you'd like to see a little more muscle on him, Jayan. Seems to be skinny at this under-15 level, but next year he's got a bigger challenge up on him. He needs to compete with the likes of Savinda Disanayaka, Sachit Jayatilaka, all strong props who could take two men and then score off them. So really a good target for him to set for next year. To know about needing muscle. The gentleman next to me didn't have a lot of muscle when he was playing centre-forward for Royal, didn't stop him. But uh, Nihilesh is dwarfed there. In the hole, as they call it. I was just going to talk about Karuna Sena, how he gets into really good positions. You're talking about the physicality um, of marking someone like Karuna Sena at under-15 level. 
who seems to have the physical advantage. That's a long range shot. But in defending guys who are physically superior to you, I think your positioning, tactical awareness, uh, and something that I did was when I had to mark guys who are twice my size, the Chikeras, maybe even the Satish, the Jayatilakas, is always get, a, get in front of them, make, cut out that pass, make sure the ball doesn't come to them because I knew that once the ball gets to them, they have an advantage. Yes, we haven't seen St. Thomas's adopting that tactic of marking the centre forward from in front. It's a high risk manoeuvre, Jahan. I think you could get away with your periscopic arms. But uh, if you don't have that asset, can be a real risk. But if you do it well, it's very effective. Nicely done by Shihar again. Delaying that pass to Vellapili. Vellapili will look for the pass and take the shot. Nicely scored goal. Good connectivity between this Royal Offence. Brings back memories of Diren Dias last year. Again, nightmares that we wake up from suddenly in the middle of the night, uh, Shanaka. But Dinal Villapilly showing a lot of maturity to play different positions, play on defence when it's needed, not draw exclusions and give his team an all-round performance. One thing I've noticed, as you said, Shanaka, St. Thomas is a bit more spread out in this quarter, but committing men uh, in attack, so with the swimming, ah, that's a good shot, cutting in from the left wing, opening up uh, the left bar, and a good low shot into the bottom corner. Nice one-two punch there, obviously a rehearsed move between Nihilesh and his barman, managed to get the back door cut behind the defender and got the ball back and it's not an easy place to score into that near post especially from that left bar that looks like uh, timeout has been called by Royal probably will be the last timeout of this quarter just under four minutes to go in this final quarter of the Mahindra Lianage trophy encounter between the under 15 teams of Royal and St. Thomas's it's just going back to that play, uh, Shanaka. Bad uh, uh, positioning on the wing defender there. He should needed to cut out that pass, as in block the passing lanes. Otherwise, he needed to get back to his man. So, 3D awareness, really, that's what we talk about. While treading water, while looking at uh, the defence and the ball travelling around, you need to know always where your man is, because he, if he's fed the ball, he shouldn't be able to score. But all in all, good work from the St. Thomas's le uh, right winger with the left hand. A very good talent for the future. Opportunity for the Royal Coaching Team. Uh, just some final messages. Maybe they've got their bench in the pool. They can work out some uh, practice moves. Some set plays that they've tried out. Strike play, as they call it, at the Rugby World Cup, Jahan. First phase scoring. So let's see what they try and... Uh, do here straight into Karunasena is the pass and uh, the Thomian defence that time were alive to it. And Nihilesh has uh, left the ball behind. Sadly, you don't have eyes in the back of your head in this game. And Suleiman Shehar will have an opportunity to right the wrong of that set play. And again... Uh, Exclusion foul. St. Thomas's have had the bulk of the exclusions beautifully taken that time by Vela Pili. Just asking Nihilesh whether what he thought of that shot as well. Nihilesh gives it the thumbs up, which is all he can do when his team are 23 12 down. I like the way Vela Pili plays, Shanaka. Gets about his business, scores a goal, puts his head down, and gets back because. They've got another four quarters to go after this one next week. So the job's not, do not done until the 7th of October. Good to see discipline from this young team. St. Thomas has never really recovered from that uh, blitzkrieg of a first quarter. Where they were trailing, I think, 7-0 probably at one stage. Ended up 9-2. Outscored Royal in the second quarter. But uh, the third quarter was all Royal again. 
Tomian, number seven, s swimming some great, great angles there into the D. He just needed his centre marker to, to support him. If they had someone in the likes of Lithum Karuna Sena, that would have been a sure Tomian goal on that side. But instead, as it happens, the stronger teams take the bulk of the goals home and Suleiman Shiha racks up another one for all college, which stands at 24 goals to 12 now. It's interesting to see how Shiha has changed his game in this final quarter. He's obviously a very strong swimmer and he's very fit. So now he knows that he's well ahead of his defender. And uh, now he knows he doesn't need to look for the pass as much. So he's confident in taking those shots and he's taking them very well. So it's good to see him adapting to different pressures at different times of the game. Nihilesh has been one of the uh, brighter aspects of the game for St. Thomas's in this under-15 encounter the left-hander not a big lad but he's uh, showed big heart and here it is with the danger man it put it into shihar shihar will find the angle and find the goal beautifully taken pass and goal from suleiman shihar and that's a quarter century when you say it like that it sounds pretty daunting that royal have put up we said 97 goals in the last Hame and Sharnaka between the under-15 and under-19 teams for both legs. We are well on course to beat that if they continue in this fashion. I don't think we've seen 90... I've seen 97 goals in my entire water polo career. Both schools put together. Well, you already have 37 goals here. I'm sure the under-19s will oblige as well. St. Thomas has through Godavitan again. To Migama, gives the ball back to Godavitanage, who thinks about the shot. And if he thinks about it that long, he's got to take it. But really good goalkeeping from Bari and good defense from uh, Velapili also, helping his goalkeeper out in the two meter. I wonder if it's a tactical move by Royal College to dr drop Dinal Velapili on defense. He seems to be doing a, a, a super job there on that uh, left bar for the goalkeeper. So Royal College. Dropping one man down as they did with Isura Kahandavala. Kahandavala, the runaway goal scorer in the 2017 game, and then Royal coming back four goals to have the highest draw in the Heyman of the history. I beg your pardon, in the history of the Heyman. But Royal College with their bench in now, lots of new faces and options. Infringement, Shihar. That was an off the ball incident. So the turnover. Yes, uh, St. Thomas is through Migama. It's clearly tiring the Tomian centre forward. And that throws what can be charitably called a loose pass. And uh, Dinal Vellapili comes away with it. Stroke still smooth even in this fourth quarter, but unfortunately for him, didn't look up in time. And this time it's Vasi Haran who will find Migama, who will think about the shot and take it well. Bari had uh, no options that time, did the correct thing and cut off the near post. And forced Migama to shoot across the face of goal into the far netting, which he did well enough. Ill discipline from the Royal College defence there. First for Dinal Villapili to lose that ball in a clear Royal advantage. And then the wing defenders really need to be treading and, and helping their goalkeeper out with the hands up on that near post. You can't leave a shooter one on one, and especially not a Thomian shooter one on one with your goalkeeper. And that's the end of the first leg of the Mahindra Leonage Trophy game between the two under-15 teams of St. Thomas's and Royal. And uh, I would say a convincing victory for this under-15 team of Royal College. 25 goals to 13. St. Thomas's will be happy that they just managed to get over the 50% mark at the end of that game. But they were beaten very soundly today in the pool by a very competent Royal College outfit. And it looks very much like the Mind the Leonage Trophy will be staying at Reed Avenue if St. Thomas's aren't able to find some 
very quick answers to some fairly serious questions that Royal College posed today. And now the stage is set for the Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy to be contested between Royal in their traditional blue and yellow caps and St. Thomas's in their traditional dark blue caps and the defending team St. Thomas's will want to avenge their juniors ever so slightly but watching the refereeing Jahan what will uh, the two sets of coaches have told their teams I just don't let the attackers turn I think once your goal side uh, the referees have been giving a lot of leeway for the attackers calling fouls very quickly and don't, don't think that uh, you need to do a lot just any physical contact uh, seems to be enough to draw the foul which is great for gameplay uh, the game is very fast and also they're encouraging uh, players to take shots um, as long as the referee sees that you're going up to take a shot that you've got intent to move forward intent to shoot I think uh, they give the advantage to the attacking team it looks like uh, gone are the days of the wanton violence that we used to see underwater Jahan and the physical tussles that were pretty much par for the course maybe 20 years ago or even 15 years ago but uh, the game has changed almost unrecognizably as uh, we see the the bylines being moved the goals being moved further away from each other for this under 19 encounter 30 meters 30 meters from goal line to goal line is the um, is the measurement we'll be back with under 19 action from the 30th annual dr rl Heyman trophy encounter just after the break with it all let us capture your milestones get it sizzling hot off the turf hear the experts break it down dig deep into the nitty-gritty be inspired by their greatness relive all the scintillating action
season 1 danuma season 2 charita valiya season 3 kreda viplava real time be up to date with it all let us capture your milestones get it sizzling hot off the turf here the experts break it down dig deep into the nitty gritty be inspired by their greatness relive all the scintillating action Season 1 Danuma Season 2 Charita Valiya Season 3 Kreda Viplava of the turf here the experts break it down dig deep into the nitty gritty be inspired by their greatness relive all the scintillating action Night 
Mark. Catch the excitement real time. Be up to date with it all. Let us capture your milestones. Get it sizzling hot off the turf. Hear the experts break it down. Dig deep into the nitty gritty. Be inspired by their greatness. Relive all the scintillating action. Season 2, Charita Avalia. Season 3, Krida Viplava. Make your mark. 
Talk. Season 1, Tenuma. Season 2, Charita Avelia. Season 3, Krida Viplava. real time be up to date with it all let us capture your milestones get it sizzling hot off the turf hear the experts break it down dig deep into the nitty-gritty be inspired by their greatness relive all the scintillating action Season 1, Tenuma. Season 2, Charita Avelia. Season 3, Krida Viplava.
excitement real time. Be up to date with it all. Let us capture your milestones. Get it sizzling hot off the turf. Hear the experts break it down. Dig deep into the nitty gritty. Be inspired by their greatness. Relive all the scintillating action. Season 1, Danuma. Season 2, Charita Avalia. Season 3, Krida Viplava. Welcome back as the backing chorus of the Papare Brands tells us one thing, that it's a Royal Tomian encounter, and the pool tells us the other thing, that it's the 30th annual Dr. R. L. Heyman trophy encounter between Royal and St. Thomas's. We've just witnessed the Royal under 15s take one step closer to annexing the Mahinda Lianagay trophy this year by a excellent 23 points to 12, 23 goals to 12 win over their rivals. But what will happen in this under-19 game? St. Thomas's, the defending champions, the defending holders of this uh, Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy encounter. And they will be trying to not emulate their juniors by making sure that they hang on to these... Uh, hang on by their bathrobes to this R. L. Heyman Trophy. Here are the stats from the under-15 game, which we just uh, witnessed. 25 goals to 13 shots attempted 40 to 32 so not a huge difference there but the scoring percentage Reza really making a difference 40 percent shooting from St. Thomas's to 62 and a half especially given that a lot of the Tomian goals came by penalties that's a telling statistic yes and also swim balls won by Royal College which means they always had first attacking opportunities so really if they're preparing for the second leg that's something that they will need to look at and make those first attacks count uh, penalties given for both sides uh, seem to be equal and the saves by the goalkeeper, the Royal College goalkeeper just seems to have edged out his counterpart but again and uh, also the saves 14 to 9 which is a huge tally in favour of Royal head to head 17 to 9 St. Thomas is dominating the first parts of this encounter since it started off in 1993 the last win for Royal coming in 2019 that's before Covid hit all of us in the stomach and St. Thomas is winning the last encounter the 29th quite convincingly in the end a real uh, goal fest by Akil Zuhair and uh, Yumal Bolegala as we look at the results of the last 10 years. St. Thomas is capitalizing in 2022 after Royal had won two games, uh, two encounters in a row. They held on in 2017 after being successful for four years in a row. That was uh, probably the largest stretch of dominance in the recent past. Reza, when St. Thomas has won 13, 14, 15, 16 and drew in 17. So they held on to the Heyman for five years in a row. But uh, Royal will be looking to make amends this year. Yes, those years are mainly owed to Zafar Zainuddin and coach Danush Kaseram and then Bilal Hassan coming in to take those three years undefeated from 27 to 2019 as we have the school songs playing at the stadium.
interview the refs and ask them before, before the next leg. The school songs have been sung. 
with additional verses from the crowd at the end of each. The formalities will soon be concluded as the teams greet each other before going hammer and tongue at each other in the pool. Luckily, the rain has let up ever so slightly, made visibility a little bit better. As we see the uh, new podium, referees usually at international games do get an elevated platform from which they can view the game and see what's happening underwater with a little bit more of an elevation. And uh, the organizing committee have gone to untold lengths to make sure that that is a reality here. Of course, the Heyman would not be possible in this spectacular fashion, not for the sponsors who will come to in a moment. Royal College Under-19, Soma Kirthi, Talal Bari, Katagampala, Dimitri Lianage, Randa Ranadunga, Yusuf Shihar, Nadil Dasnaika, Anuk Mahalekam, Indeep De Silva, Yasundu De Silva, Handun Patirana and Imad Ismat will make up the 12 for Royal with uh, Randa Ranadunga being the skipper. In the number six cap from St. Thomas's College under 19, Sivali Gurusinghe, Talib Mansur, Krishna Swami, Eden Tesara, Migara Gurusinghe, Sheran Nawaz, Yumal Bollagale is the captain for St. Thomas's. In the number seven cap, Shreshta Anthony, Nitish Pereira, Senthil Kumaran, Abir, Abiru Galabuda, Deshan Dimel, and many of the team that won in 2022 still available for selection for the Thomian coaches. Of course, they will be missing their last year's captain, Diren Dias, and of course, leading goal scorer, Akil Zuhair, who are no longer available for selection. But uh, that would not damp the spirits of this Thomian team, who will be all out to defend uh, the trophy in what has been a pretty dismal year for St. Thomas's against Royal so far. Despite the rain, the atmosphere at the Sukhothasa Stadium swimming pool is electric. Both supporters in their numbers, the Royal College and St. Thomas's College, I believe, led by the cricketing teams of both schools, are driving the support and the puppery bands on either side. Yes, Jehan, it's uh, lovely to see that the rain has not kept people away. I'm sure we have a few more joining us on the puppery.com because they haven't managed to brave the rain. So, welcome to all of you. We are bringing the Sukhothasa Stadium pool to your living room. And the atmosphere, I'm afraid, we can't package and send to you, but we can do our best to describe it. As I'm joined in the commentary box by uh, two royal stalwarts, so I'm a little outnumbered, but I'll do my best, Reza Ghani and Jehan Mubarak, former Royal College uh, Heyman players. And a very good every evening to everyone joining us for this all-important 30th edition of the Royal Thormian Encounter. So really, this is one-on-one -on -one battle. St. Thomas's with Yomal Bollagala, Migara Gurusinghe, Shrestha Anthony's and their prop Aidan Tisera. Their main four goal scorers, Royal will be looking to defend. And then when Royal bringing the bench through Anuga Hadum Pantirana, Yusuf Sihar and Akindu... Um, um, Sorry, Akindu Hakmi Mana, that will be where they will counter attack. So, really, it will be a holding game for Royal in the first quarter to see whether they can repel everything that Yomal Bolegala has planned with his team and then count on the other side. Plenty of weapons on uh, both sides, plenty of options for St. Thomas's to score from. If last year was anything to go by, but a year is a long time in sport, Jahan, and things can change very, very quickly. Yeah, especially at under 19 level. The development happens very, very quickly as we get ready for the swim ball of this 30th Royal Thomian Heyman encounter. Just to remind everyone who might be joining us for the first time for a water polo game, the first little flag that you see on the far side, that's the two meter mark. The uh, markings used to be red at one point, and then we have a five meter mark, three meters away from that. And then the yellow flag is from where the seven meter mark is. Six meter mark, I'm sorry. And uh, immediate technical stoppage. Yeah, the device, a flotation device, I don't know what that's called, to keep the ball afloat for the swim ball has not been dragged down. Immediately a stoppage in play. So somebody had one job, as they say, and uh, forgot to do it in the excitement. And why not? Because it is an exciting encounter. And uh, I was just saying during the under-15 game, Jahan, next to the cricket and the rugby, 
between the two schools. This is probably the most looked forward to encounter in third place. Would that be an accurate summation? Uh, for sure. Uh, the Raw the raw Thomin encounters, I think this draws a lot of interest. Cricket and rugby, of course. Staples uh, in the sporting in, uh, industry in uh, Sri Lanka. But water polo, a lesser known sport played probably by the two main schools, Royal and St. Thomas, is still draw huge numbers and a lot of interest. So we're still no closer to finding out what the referee's solution to that uh, technical hitch was. And I think it will be a center pass. <laughs> referees uh, flown down from Singapore, especially for this encounter. Ting Wai Pio and Javier O oh will be our referees. And uh, we went to neutral referees foreign referees, uh, Reza, maybe about 10 years ago, perhaps? I think we've all been in that uh, unforgiving position of refereeing Heyman Shanak. You've uh, had to do it a couple of times. It's not easy being a Royalist or a Thomian, uh, refereeing a Royal Thomian encounter. Yes, uh, I was rechristened many times by uh, members of the crowd. But uh, all but also a completely different experience for these international referees. I understand the, the kind of fanfare you have at, and the interest that is uh, sparked in this game, they don't experience a lot internationally. So really it's a challenge for them as well and I'm sure they've had many names called across by both sets of fans, but really keeping that discipline and making sure that the, the referees are looked after is also part of our encounter. I think we might have a little bit of an issue with the um, scoreboard and the shot clocks which are being uh, dealt with very swiftly. It's been trying conditions here because it's very wet and of course as you know they have to draw a lot of wires around the Sukhothadasa Stadium pool which perhaps wasn't engineered for this kind of technology. It's a stadium that was built for the SAF games in the late 80s, early 90s, and I'm sure many people couldn't have predicted the technological advancements that we'll see, such as the electronic touchpads, and we now have uh, electronic scoreboards as well for this Heyman encounter on the far side, at the right side of the pool, the deep end, if you like, of this 50-meter pool. And we also have shot clocks on either side of the pool so the players can don't have to look or crane their necks to see how much time they have to shoot. If you're new to the game, 30 seconds is how long you have to take a shot from the time you gain possession of the ball. So a lot like basketball, except that uh, you're not wearing shoes. And as we wait, we can see the players warming up those legs just to make sure that they don't lose the heat that is necessary to warm up. So the technical problems have been sorted out and all systems are go, so to speak. And St. Thomas has have the first possession, looking to move the ball around a little. And if that's uh, anything of the quality of shooting that we're going to see in this game, then that is a very good start for Migara Gurusinga and St. Thomas's. A heavily strapped right shoulder for Gurusinga. And uh, I'm surprised it's still in its socket, the way he powered that one through. Excellent shot. No one was expecting. Royal slightly caught napping. The goalkeeper definitely caught napping there. Generated a lot of power just from that shot. St. Thomas has have two good power players in Bolagala and Gurusinga. Royal need to be wary of them very early and so does the goalkeeper. So really shutting out those angles early, coming up sometimes will help. St. Thomas is moving the ball very well indeed. Well read. Double marking the prop. It's going to be a key, uh, key positional battle in this game. Especially the way the game uh, was refed. The under-15 game was refed. Positional play for the prop is going to be very, very important. Royal are doing that really well. Dropping their point man marker back to the prop. Good shot taken that time by uh, Ranatunga, the captain for Royal, but Sivali Gurusinga in the Thomian goal. Up to it, nice pass and a quickly taken shot. 
but not a lot of angle for Ranatunga so, to work with. So off screen, Bulagala switch to Anuga Hanum Patirana and he's trying to make advantage of that mismatch. Aiden Tishara with the backhand. That brings back some memories. A beautiful shot. Easily taken. Not something that either the defender or the goalkeeper was expecting. But Aiden Tisara, who's uh, clearly gone for some Chinese uh, cupping on his back, shows that his muscles are working just fine. Bad positioning by Randhanathunga there on the centre marker. Needed to be heavy on his right arm. Jehan, if you'd like to run us through that. Yeah, he left him wide open. He had both arms up. He opened him very easy for the backhand. It's a very easily intercepted pass. But again, Telegraphed almost. But again, nothing to take away from St. Thompson's. They are feeding their main goal scorers and feeding them well. As we have one slight mistake, which I think we can excuse them for. But now Royal on attack need to set that D up early. Looking to distribute through Anuga Hadun Patri, another left-hander. Royal screaming for the ball to their prop. Royal feeding the ball from very wide out. They need a lot of accuracy with that pass if they're going to play that game. Spread full across the width of the pool. And with the wind that's up there, that's going to be very, very difficult to control. Yasad De Silva was uh, the prop and he had a couple of passes come into him, but they were not great ones. Nice ball movement from St. Thomas's and uh, Talib Mansur. Gets it back quickly from Yumel Bollagala, unselfishly from the captain. And it's uh, bounced into the far corner again and St. Thomas is going to a 3-0 lead. Wonderful drift there by Talib Mansoor, luring the goalkeeper onto that corner and then taking the opposite one. Excellent stuff. Bollagala, one of the chief goal, goal scorers last year. And I think Royal are probably expecting him to unleash. But it's been good to see the Thomian skipper bringing other players into the game. Even the first uh, pass was something that uh, they would have expected to come to his bar, but well taken by Migara Gurusinghe. That initial onslaught from St. Thomas has prompted a timeout from the Royal College uh, coaching department. Yashro the Vasalage probably feeling that he needs to break the momentum in, of the game more than anything else. Just give them a bit of time, get back into the game. Very young coaching team for uh, Royal Reza. Yes, and also test the mettle of uh, your coaching staff, really. This is a high-pressure situation. Suddenly the game gets beyond you and then you think and you think again. So, really, the timeout will do them a lot of good. But these are situations that you plan for. You know if you are trailing, you've got to go to plan B. And I think that's what we will see with Royal. But we don't want to sh see them shooting from outside. We want the ball distributed into the two-meter. And then a good shot being taken on percentage. Ranadunga, the captain, brings it up for Royal. The pass is uh, not too accurate, but will allow for a good shot to be taken by Yasandar De Silva. But again, Sivali Gurusinghe is up to the mark in goal. Really good save good save because if you notice that Tomian defender he drifted back onto the goal and supported his goalkeeper so really team effort coming to St. Thomas's save here's a nice uh, little bit of movement from Talib Mansur again fakes sends the goal in the wrong way and sends the ball the opposite way really good work from Talib Mansur long arm Yes, just watch those legs pump. He keeps moving, he keeps shifting, he keeps getting the defender off his back. And that is real strength and conditioning and strength for you from this Thomian outfit. I understand Tanura Abe Gunwadana is doing a lot of work with them. Tanura uh, again was a rugby player and a water polo player, so he would definitely have had a lot of input into that play. Thomas is building a wall in front of their goalkeeper. And it's a good shot just coming off the upright. Guru Singh is saved by some good defense. 
in front of him by uh, Bullagala. Skipper leading from the back, as it were, this time. Really good defensive positioning there by the Thomian uh, defenders. If you have a chance to go back to that at some point, you can see hands up and supporting the goalkeeper, really. So, channeling the ball towards the goalie. Outstanding shooting from Shresh Anthony's. All the names you spoke about at the beginning of the game now putting their name up on the scoreboard. Looking dangerous for Royal College. So really, you need to shut these scorers out early if you want to make a difference in the game. That shot came from nowhere, Jahan. Yeah, with just one, one second on the shot clock, with so much composure, knew exactly what he was doing. Tired the defence out, tired the goalkeeper out and just lobbed it perfection uh, by St. Thomas's. Anthony is also a member of the national team that toured the 22nd Asia Pacific Tournament in August. So him, Bolagala are really were in that team and have made a lot of progress since then. So Thomas has clearly looked to be the physically stronger side, dominating those power play positions. Very well taken shot indeed. St. Thomas's have always traditionally had excellent shooters, especially from uh, the perimeter. And now Royal College can break. First opportunity for Royal. And despite the best efforts of Sivali Gurusinger, it's Yasandu De Silva, the centre forward, that gets Royal on the board. He was all alone in front. And in one on one situations like this, you have to back the attacking player. Using the swimming speed that Royal is known for and then holding the ball, waiting till the goalie sinks to take the shot. Excellent shot there by the number 11. But really, it shows that if you are left one on one with the goalkeeper, it's all in favour of the attacker. So, really, the defenders needed to get back there for St. Thomas's. This is Nehemiah Krishnaswamy, the left hand on the right wing. Quick passing to Aiden Tesara, but it's a ball under call, so the referees have been pretty consistent, giving the defenders something to work with also. Long ball from Vinuda Samakirti in the Royal goal. St. Thomas is doing their best not to foul, but that time not getting there and it will be a penalty for Royal. See who steps up to take it. So let's just talk us through that penalty rule there, Reza. So good work really by uh, Dimitri Lienage to do the hard yards, get into the centre of that pool as well. Excellent goal by Randaranatunga, the captain of the Royal College team, taking that left corner, giving his team a much needed goal and also confidence going in now with the scoreline showing slightly better than it was before. Two goals to Royal College, but nonetheless, St. Thomas's have a three goal advantage in this first quarter and we've got one and a half, just under two minutes to play. So any contact with the swimmer who looks like he might be in a scoring position, any physical contact will result in a penalty if it's in the two meter. Like there might be another penalty. The foul is on number six, Randa Randadunga, the captain. So scores on one end and gives away a penalty at the other. That's uh, life in a microcosm for you. As uh, Yumal Bollagala, the skipper, will look to get his name on the score sheet for the first time and he'll wonder why it's taken him so long. Again, Royal can have two defenders on that penalty line. If the ball bounces back into play, it is play on. Beautiful save. Beautiful save by Vinuda Samakirti. And he would do well to secure the ball before celebrating. Could have ended badly for him if uh, he was celebrating and Bollagala got the rebound. Royal looking to distribute, looking composed. Royal passing has let them down a lot in this first quarter. Very easy passes, not going to hand, especially in extra man situations there. They had easy overlap in front of goal, messing that up. Twice now they've done that. Contrasting options of attacks and Thomas's using their physical powers. Royal College choosing to play on the counter with their faster swimmers. It's a nice ball into uh, Aiden Tisara who managed to get the shot away. And this is the kind of water polo that we are 
used to seeing at this Heyman. Physical contest in the hole, as we call it. Not in a complimentary way, because it really is a hole if you're in there. Lots of physical work. Lovely swimming by Royal to get in front of the goal uh, defenders. And again, it's a turnover from uh, Royal. Shrest Anthony's doing well to get rid of the ball. Bolagala. Migara Gurusinga, his twin brother is in goal, Sivali. Bolagala getting into positions that he needs to be in to, to get these goals on the board for St. Thomas's College. But really, Royal need to be careful. He is always picking out the cap number 12 of Royal College, Ranugahanul Patrina. He is the smallest man on the field. And St. Thomas are known for that. They will capitalize on any little chink you have in your armor. Nice pass to uh, Bihendu Katugampala. Little intervention which gives the defender Shrest Anthony's a little bit of time. Lovely turn. Really a lovely turn that was. And uh, the exclusion. Royal couldn't do enough with it. Well, that brings us to the end of the first quarter. Royal having the final opportunity on goal there in the dying seconds of the first quarter. And it is a five goals to two lead that St. Thomas's take into that uh, first huddle. The game is only 25% done, so absolutely nothing in it. That was the first goal, an outstanding effort from Migara Gurusinga. And Aiden Tisara with a beautiful backhand, completely unexpected. And Talib Mansoor here faking the goalkeeper who had no other options Royal getting in on goal lovely save in fact from Guru Singh there and Mansoor with his second goal this is Shrest Anthony's with uh, what was the shot of the day so far and this was Royal getting on the boards after that 5-0 deficit Yasandu Di Silva taking that shot really well and Randa Ranatunga capitalizing from the spot and his counterpart Bolla Agala will be upset he sets high standards for himself in shooting he will not be happy to have missed that opportunity from the spot it's a good save there by the Royal goalkeeper on the end of that highlights package something that they will need to concentrate on going into the second quarter and we'll reach you after the commercial breaks Dan, what struck you in? Black Knight, make your mark. Welcome back to the coal run that is uh, the Sugadadasa Stadium pool at the moment. We've just come back to you at the tail end of an ROYAL battle cry from the Royalists cheering on their water polo team in this 30th annual Dr. R.L. Heyman Trophy encounter. Royal playing from left to right on your screens in their traditional blue and gold caps. And St. Thomas is playing right to left as the rain drizzles down after lashing down a few moments earlier on this Sukhadadasa Stadium pool. Luckily, no lightning, which makes it uh, safe enough for this game to go ahead. Except, of course, if you can call that first goal by Guru Singh a lightning strike. Have you? Have you? <laughs> and if that's anything to go by, lightning will strike more than once. High-quality shooting by the Thomians in the first quarter. Five goals okay. to two is how it stands. Royal on the breakaway, making a little bit of a difference. St. Thomas is committing players forward. We'll probably think about a safety man in the second quarter just to try and allow Royal not to bridge the gap too much. We spoke about this at the beginning of the game. St. Thomas's are going to come hard at you. We've, they've got three top shooters 
with a lot of strength and a lot of accuracy and a lot of experience behind them. So really, Royal need to hold them and then counter-attack when the bench is in. Pranatunga wins the swim ball. Royal screaming for the ball to their prop. He's got good position in front of him. Oh, excellent goal there by the Royal College prop. Yasandu De Silva may opens the scoring in the second quarter. And what a way to do it. Very well orchestrated indeed. Royal College giving a lot of space to this Anaika. Not allowing St. Thomas to double mark him like they were able to do in the first quarter. Giving him space to get away from his defender. Excellent ball control and good finish to wrap it up. Nice tactical awareness from the coaches of Royal to make sure that uh, Shrestha Anthony's, who is front marking Yasanda De Silva, is not allowed to continue to do that. Aggressive defense by Yasanda, the goal scorer, and uh, he wins the battle on the defensive end of the pitch as well. So, an exclusion for St. Thomas's in uh, their own half of the pool. So. Royal will have an extra man to try and bring the gap to within one. It's Nehemiah Krishnaswamy who has to go to the bin. Ranatunga with a thunderous shot comes back off the crossbar. It's an inaccurate pass. Anugahandran Patrina can go in. He's got options. Bad option to the prop there. But really he had clear water in front of him. It was the right move to pass to the right wing, but he needed to fake and come in with the ball. It's a good bit of defensive play that time by the prop marker. If you watch the ball coming in from the wing, and the Tomian defender did well to get in front of Yasunda De Silva. That was uh, Boldagala, the captain. <laughs> Royal College drifting back, offering support to the prop marker, knowing the threat that he poses. St. Thomas has this time with a loose pass, and this is where Royal can be dangerous on the counter with their superior swimming strength as they attack this time down the left flank. Mean Maninga Sekara cutting back in, trying to earn an exclusion. Got options in Yasunda De Silva, the second prop coming in. Randa Ranthunga puts it into the net, brings Royal to within one goal of this uh, Thormian onslaught that was in the first quarter. Superb recovery from Royal. They've managed to tactically outthink St. Thomas's in this second period. And Boldagala calling his team together will need to settle things down and try to play at their own pace rather than respond to the pace of Royal. They're not reacting, Jahan, to the fact that the prop is being crowded out. They're not really moving the ball in the perimeter. Yeah, I think Royal are drawing this, uh, the Thomians in, making sure that they all come in, allowing them to, uh, to counter as well, and forcing St. Thomas to shoot from outside. They're good shot taken, not on target though. And this is what Royal College won, shot from the perimeter so that their swimmers can break. And exactly. I also noticed that the prop is driving into position, not setting himself early, which allows a bit of space for the ball to be thrown past into. And also showing Jehan that you can't be a single shooter, you need to really distribute this ball amongst your top three shooters to get the best chance of scoring a goal. <clears throat> Yasinda De Silva looking for the foul that time. Doesn't come his way. Here's uh, Talib Mansoor. St. Thomas is still maintaining a lead, but not a commanding one, just a slender one at this point as Aiden Tisara tries to get into position. And that is a stunning goal again from the right hand side. It's uh, Sharan Nawaz. It's an excellent shot indeed, not much of a uh, backswing, as you would say in uh, water polo. The goalie completely caught off guard. He wasn't sure if he was going to uh, shoot or fake pass. Excellent shot. Nawaz coming off that under-15 encounter from last year. So really a fresher 
in this Tomein uh, outfit. Good to see him early on the scoreboard. Will give their bench a lot of confidence and the juniors. Lovely turn from uh, Royal there. That's Mihin Manigasekara with a superb little lob. Good technique to get that away. But just finding the crossbar, but really good shooting on both ends of the pool here. Mihin Manigasekara with that short stroke. If you notice the number six as well coming to the aid of the goalkeeper, St. Thomas's are doing a good job at defending all these Royal attacks. And so are Royal on the other side. Defending in pairs, attacking in pairs. Talib Mansour squandering a really good uh, scoring opportunity on the other end for the Thomians and allowing Royal now to really lay siege to the Thomian goal. Yusuf Shihar smashed that at Guru Singha and Guru Singha makes an important save. The shot was there for the taking but good support from Bollagala as well covering one side of the goal and Shihar had to shoot it straight at the goalkeeper. Ranatunga is interfered with and it's an exclusion. And get no arguments there as Migara Gurusinga goes to the exclusion zone. Well blocked by the Royal, the Thomian defense. Samson Thomas has find themselves with space to swim into. And it's excellent defense by the Royal College number five, Dimitri Lenegay. It was getting in front of his uh, attacker. Bollagala looks like he didn't know what happened, but he knows exactly what he did there. So any contact with a player about to shoot, especially if you're on the side or the back penalty and Randa Ranatunga, the skipper will be very grateful as he steps up to try and bring Royal within one. Megara Gosinga ready to go to the right, positioning well. He knows Randa's had success on to the right of his on to the right of the goalkeeper. Migara looking to come up on the penalty just as the whistle goes. Good positioning by the goalkeeper there to stop that penalty. It's a good save. So he's positioning himself to a little, a little to the left of the goal, if you noticed watching at home, which means that he's forcing Ranatunga to go across yeah. the goal, which means that he has to release a little later, yeah. giving him a little bit more time. Yeah, okay. But Ranatunga okay. instead okay. went to the bottom corner, which meant that Guru Singh has arm could just get there and provide enough of cover so good water polo defensive water polo all around there royal now with position need to go to one of their set moves this is a corner ball they need to make that position count because otherwise st thomas's will hurt you on the other side another bit of inaccurate passing jahan yeah once again sloppy passing these are not uh, passes under pressure the easy passes that are really killing the game for Royal. Nehemiah Krishnaswamy, the left-hander, manages to find stretch to Anthony. Siti will happily grab that shot. Count himself very lucky. So Royal have uh, slowed things down now, or perhaps St. Thomas's have succeeded in slowing Royal down. Nice turn again from the Thomian defender Anthony's and sprinting out is Shehran Nawaz scored the last goal for the Thomians. Aiden Tisara gives him some space. Tisara does well to take the opposite defender out of the equation and Nawaz just thought a little bit too hard too long and Samakirti did the business but he looks like he might yet have a penalty. Anuga Handun Patirana really needed to do a little better on the defence there. He shouldn't have got sucked into Aiden Tisera pulling out of the goal. The real threat was coming from Nawaz. And excellent response by the Royal College defence. They're really turning the heat up in the second quarter and making it a game which seems to be ebbing and flowing in e favour of each team. Uh, 
Again, an exclusion for St. Thomas's. Royal will take it quickly. And the rabbit shot from Ranatunga is good. Shoots it just above the head of Gurusinga in goal. And that's the one place that a goalkeeper can't get his arms to in a hurry. Anthony's does well to get across, but unsights his goalkeeper slightly. Excellent twist and shot there by the Royal College captain. And also, Yasandu De Silva being a strong prop, which is what we're seeing on display here, giving him those options. And the, the defenders then are not sure who to mark. Do you, do you intercept the guy who's with the ball or do you hang with the prop? So really, some choices to be made on the Tomian defence there. Well, Reza, you, you make a choice and you stick to it. I think that's the only correct answer to that. Being caught in two minds is uh, never helpful for the goalkeeper. So you just tell him you've got the guy with the ball. Uh, once again, a breakdown uh, with the screen. The referee is calling a, a technical timeout on the end. The shot clock and the screen have both gone off. It's been a wonderful game so far. Uh, tactically very different the game, the way the game has been played by St. Thomas's and Royal College. Swimming strength from Royal, shooting strength from St. Thomas's. Both teams so far look pretty evenly matched. Just one goal separating them. The way Royal have been stretching this Tomian team end to end, Jahan, you have to ask yourself whether it's going to open up for the Royalists in the third and fourth quarters. It will depend a lot on how the Tomian coaching team, led by Sachita Jayatilaka, use their bench. You already saw Aiden Tissera being subbed out. He's obviously been going through a bit of fatigue. You see all those uh, cupping marks on his back, which is a sign of lactic acid buildup. So, shows that he's uh, really been in the wars. Never short of an off mic joke, our friends, uh, Jahan. Because of repeat, can you repeat again? And uh, Sir. Thomas Hirsch will start with the centre pass. It's a rare okay, occasion okay. given the fast paced okay. nature of the game, but really a chance for the players also to catch their breath, uh, reassess their thoughts. This break will help St. Thomas Hirsch, I think that's, uh, that's a given. Try, let me, you try one more time, you try one Just more time. A, say a again. minute and a half left uh, on the clock to, end of this, to the end of this quarter. St. Thomas's will be looking forward to that. They want to go in at half time with a two goal cushion. They've got just one goal separating them. The race to a three goal lead, Royal clawing things back in the second quarter. And they'll know as the game goes deep, the fitness and the swimming is going to come into play. They'll want to close things off now. So with that kind of time remaining, two attacks for St. Thomas's College and one attack for Royal. So really what you said, Jehan, was looking to capitalize on both attacks. They've got the break, a much needed break that they need. So really they need to make this deformation count. Provided the shot clock is used well. And it's one thing we were talking about off is is using the clock, run the shot clock down so that you don't allow the opposition more attacks than required. Also, Reza, I think the uh, goalkeeping has been top draw. As we say that, that's Guru Singer with his left hand. Ranatunga. Nice uh, horizontal arm from Sivali Guru Singer. And that's Samakirti with a really important save. Not just once, but twice from the resultant penalty as well. As, I, as a former goalkeeper yourself, you must be uh, very happy with seeing those saves. Yes, and also confidence has a lot to do with it. The, your confidence as a goalkeeper comes when your defence plays with you as well and then channels that ball right into you instead of leaving you all alone. So a, a, a collective effort really is what will allow each player to elevate his game as this game pro progresses. Looks and like Royal have also done some homework on the Tomian attackers, uh, Reza, and know where they're going to shoot. But we'll uh, tell you more about that as we come back. Uh, in fact, we've, we've just got the shot clock and the um, 
scoreboard functioning so we will continue to the end of this quarter so it's still 6-5 nothing has changed on the scoreboard in the break it's always uh, helpful so Thomas has had possession St. Thomas's are ready to go. Hips up in a flat position, ready to take off as soon as that whistle goes because they know they need to shift a bit of the momentum that this uh, quarter has brought in, for, in favor of Royal College towards St. Thomas's going into the break. But I think the main difference from both teams, uh, gentlemen, has been the positioning and the awareness by Yasando De Silva, the Royal College prop, really turning, getting into good positions and commanding that he be fed the ball just because of the locations that he's getting himself into. A diagonal ball to Nawaz. Talib Mansur. Defender gets into a good position and does a good job on Mansoor there so if you're wondering at home why sometimes it's a penalty and sometimes it's not it's because the defender got in a good position between the goal and the attacker unlike here where Shrest Anthony's was well behind the Royal attacker and uh, Guru Singh again providing just enough of an angle Not a good option really from the from the Royal College shooter on the previous occasion because you really want to use the shot clock as Jehan said before. Yeah, that was a great opportunity to run the shot clock down, bring the Thomian uh, defence back. Yeah, once again, Royal College have space in front of them. And St. Thomas defenders struggling to get back, tiring, finding themselves in attacking position. And the execution to finish it off. Royal College draw level, six all. Number three. Mihin Sekere it was who scored. Really good uh, swimming speed from Sekere. Strong stroke. He's only a little lad, but doesn't matter because he turned, saw the opening, and took it with a plum. Yes, cool, calm head by Mihin Sekere. He opened the scoring for Royal in the second leg last year as well after that unforgettable scoreline in the first leg but really shows that these players have grown they've learned from the experiences and that's what you ask of them we talked about development at under 19 level and Vanika Sekaru who was uh, a fresher last year showing that he has done what needs to be done in the interim as we have five seconds left on the shot clock taken by Ranatunga who shoves it down the throat of Sivali Gurusinga, who will just swim this one out and gratefully ask for the quarter where St. Thomas's were leading five goals to two and suddenly find themselves even on the scoreboard at six goals all at halftime of the 30th encounter of the Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy between Royal and St. Thomas's. Nothing separating the two teams. Six goals all. Although St. Thomas' College raced to a 3 to nothing lead as the game started, prompting Yasuo the Vasalage and the Royal College coaching camp to call a timeout. And he's, he is the second quarter where Royal managed to draw things back through De Silva, who played a fantastic centre forward position, showing strength and control, getting into positions, drawing penalties. Probably the shot of the day so far by Shera Nawaz from the outside for St. Thomas's College. An excellent goalkeeping from both goalkeepers on perimeter shots and off penalties. Nawaz guilty of not drifting there, really. We speak about drifting to the left and then shooting on the opposite corner. Another example of the Royal College defence coming to their aid to really nullify that first quarter there where the game seemed to get away from them. And then a good shot from Randa Ranatunga on that awkward wing to take a goal. And Min Vaniga Sekara putting the finishing touches to a very useful second quarter. 
as we will see you live back on the other side after these short commercial breaks. Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy encounter between Royal College and St. Thomas's College. The third quarter underway with nothing separating the two teams. Six goals all. Royal College clawing their way back into this and drawing level just at the end of the second quarter. St. Thomas's clawing the R. L. Heyman Trophy back last year with a devastating performance by two of their big guns, Akil Zohair and uh, Diren Dias. Both of those have graduated and gone on to university, whereas the rest of the team are trying to make sure that they don't squander that good work. They've squandered a five-goal lead, or maybe it's too unkind to say squandered yet, but 5-2 was uh, the scoreline at the first quarter, and it's 6-all. Now it's St. Thomas's needing to make sure that they don't allow Royal to tactically dictate the game to them. So, stats update from the Papare team. Six goals all in those last two quarters. 14 shots by Royal, 15 shots by St. Thomas's, and 42% sh shooting average by both schools. Maniga Sekar again with that uh, short arm stroke. Winning the penalty. There is an interesting call by St. Thomas's putting Aiden Tissera on the wing uh, rather than centre forward, matching him up against a faster swimmer. And Royal College capitalizing on that and drawing the foul and the penalty. Nicely converted goal by the Royal Skipper, who asked for a little bit of noise from his supporters, and why not? And for the first time, Royal College going ahead. 7 6 in their favor. Now, St. Thomas's College need to strike now, early in the third quarter before the game goes into the fourth quarter where strength and the physical fitness is going to come into play. Yes, St. Thomas has really need to get the ball to Migara Gurusinga and uh, Yomal Bolagala. That is what they would have spoken about in the half. Give your top shooters as much ball as possible. Surprisingly, uh, Reza, we don't see Bolagala in the pool at the moment. Maybe a tactical... Exclusion just for just to save him for this fourth quarter, or perhaps it's an injury. I did notice that a couple of Thomin players heavily strapped up, shoulders and knees. Uh, losing control of the ball. St. Thomas is just gifting away to Royal College. Again, those are Allowing positions them that to, uh, to counter. I'm sorry, Reza. Sorry. We have always spoken about keeping your head up. St. Thomas has did not see that ball going out wide. Again, those are positions that Bolagala or Migara Gurusinga would have taken up. St. Thomas has this time their turn to counter. Yes, Migara Gurusinga, the opening goal scorer. And he puts St. Thomas back on level terms. <laughs> so using that uh, extra man or... The advanced 
player and Royal in no position to catch up. Looks like a tactic by St. Thomas's as well to play Guru Singha up so that he can go on the fast break. He's got less distance to swim. That's where Royal College need to have someone on him all the time. The centre market didn't need to get involved in that attack. They had a man up advantage already. So it looks like they've switched numbers around and Wanika Sekere is now being marked by Nehemiah Krishnaswamy. And uh, he managed to get the ball off the dangerous left winger for Royal. And will slow it down again. A fast-paced game will play into Royal's hands. Good shot, well saved. Shooting from outside will not help you. Basics of water polo, get the ball into the prop or the wings. And instead, Royal College have ball. And good positional advantage with clear water in front of them. Extra man coming up for Royal College. I beg your pardon, that was an offensive foul. So looks and like the referee having a small chat to Nehemiah. A Christmas. bit of indiscipline creeping in there. He didn't need to do that. Just a tap on the head as he got the ball back. Conceding an offensive foul. Gifting the advantage back to Royal College. Royal College playing extra man. Need to distribute the, that ball to the two wings. The left wing is free for Royal College. Left bar gets it instead. Good save by the goalkeeper. Unforgivable from uh, Krishna Swami. And I think Royal get a little lucky to get that penalty from Yasundu De Silva. I think that uh, penalty was given as a result of the goalkeeper taking the ball under. So the rules are you cannot hide the ball away from the player. As a goalkeeper, you can take it with both hands. I'd like to see that again, but some poetic justice perhaps. As Guru Singh saves that one fairly easily. And Krishna Swami has been subbed and Santosh Kalansuriya comes in. And uh, he should be subbed and given a lecture as well. Royal College, good on defence, fronting that prop, making sure St. Thomas's do not get the ball into the two-metre. But instead, we've got the left-hander free. Needed to come in a little more. He had clear water in front of him and really make use of that right corner. But also, if Royal are aware of the Tomian tactic for, C uh, for Migara Gurusinga to break off the centre marker, he can be swimming him down Jehan into a double prop position and then nullifying that attack. So little things to come off the bench to counter-attack everything that has been thrown against you. Good try by St. Thomas's College. Aiden Cicera playing in a double prop. We know St. Thomas is always going to double prop when they want a goal. And it's either one of those two props who will score. But instead, we have Royal College on attack now. Clear water in front of him. Good distribution to Yasandu De Silva. Needs to make this count. Nice strength from Yasandu De Silva. Knew exactly where the dimensions of the goal were and made sure he managed to wriggle his way under the defender. Shrest Anthonis did well and a lovely turn and shoot from Yasundar De Silva. He's a strong boy and has a little bit of Bilal Hassan in the way he moves around in that, uh, in that hole there, Jahan. He has a good awareness of where the goal is. He always knows wherever he is uh, facing, he knows where the goal is. And the teammates somehow know how to find him as well. Which was the opposite of what Aiden Tesera did just at the other end. He didn't know exactly where the further bar was. But De Silva has a good understanding. It's like a cricketer knowing where his off stump is. And Migara Gurusinga just cannot uh, find the dip on that shot. So Royal defending really well and have crept back into the lead again. St. Thomas is struggling to get back in defence. Or perhaps it's tactical, they're leaving one man un unmarked all the time. Allowing Royal to counter-attack with an extra man. And a well-taken shot drawing the corner. Another really good save from Guru Singha. Don't know why he didn't go for that ball which was free. Taken quickly, Ranatunga trying to draw the foul. Takes the shot. Yasandu De Silva really needed to stick to his prop position there and let the winger come and take the ball on that corner. 
It's not a good pass from Guru Singha. Didn't find the man who had hung back and Talib Mansur this time. We'll give it back to Guru Singha who will turn and shoot and takes it well. So Guru Singha puts St. Thomas's back level on the scoreboard. Eight goals all. The distribution from Guru Singha, even though he's shot stopping, has been excellent. His distribution maybe could be a little better. Again, Migara Guru Singha pairing up with Anuga Hanun Patrina, the smaller of the Royal College defenders. So really, that's where the captain, Randa Ranatunga, needs to take charge of this defence. He's the centre-back marker. He needs to be that aiding force for the goalkeeper. Both teams tiring now. You can see the players off the, field, off the bench. On the ground, cramping up. It's good defence by St. Thomas's. I thought just that would have been a ball under, but referee is ruling otherwise. Giving the foul in favour of Royal College. Really good defence there. First time we've seen actually just a foul awarded. Another exclusion. Number four, Kalan Surya. And that should be a penalty. Kalan Surya played the ball when he was excluded. be a double exclusion as well that's an unnecessary foul indeed the first one was unnecessary enough the second was doubly so on his way out just interfering with the play well, the goalkeepers have been good on penalties so far uh, this encounter Raza. yes and also pressure now shifting back from Royal to St. Thomas's but this Thomian goalkeeper has been very good if you look at the positioning and the awareness Dimitri Lienage makes that positioning count for nothing really. Good shot in a pressure situation to take Royal one up. Good game all around from both schools. Really is a fantastic game of water polo so far. Not the high scoring encounter we saw last year. But that doesn't matter because the intensity has been very high. And uh, still wondering why Yumal Bullagula is still on the bench. Once again, Royal College drifting and double marking the prop. Triple marking even. Three players surrounding the prop man. The shot from outside. A weak shot. Didn't get a lot behind it. Went for the bound shot. Faked across, but went uh, near post. Saw it coming a mile away, Jahan. And uh, Samakirti was uh, up to it. St. Thomas is really getting themselves into some terrible positions. In defence, again a turnover as Guru Singer's distribution once again fails him. Guru Singer's long passing even in last year's second leg, if you watch the game again, was not the best. So really, Royal need to be looking at these options, pressuring the goalkeeper at every opportunity. Every, every chance you get, if you pressure that long pass, I'm sure he's not going to make it more times than the other. But as we have Royal now on position again, Asking for a shot to be taken. Beautiful shot. Outstanding shooting from the Royal Captain. Really good shot from Randa Ranatunga there. Rose up and faked and shot right across goal, Jahan. He's been looking for that the entire match. He's been trying that from outside. Finally, he found his range. He's been trying that from the first quarter. Went cross, went cross and finally went near post and found his range. Excellent shot. Speaking of Guru Singha's distribution, Reza. In the last minute of this third quarter, St. Thomas's train in a very small pool, the 25 meter pool. So, coming to this larger pool, Guru Singha suddenly has to change all his dimensions. And that makes uh, a big difference. Royal with the pass to Mean. Uh, to Dimitri Lianage. Lianage wins the foul. Manages to find the open man. And this should be a comfortable finish for Royal. And it is. Is it? No goal. Beautiful work from Guru Singh again. He's been excellent between the sticks. He can just replicate that form in his distribution. St. Thomas's will be comfortably in the lead, but it's not to be so far. Quick double mark of the prop. Good discipline from Royal. 
And the shot clock winds down, the quarter winds down, and St. Thomas's lose an opportunity to get a shot on goal. Samakirti is relieved, and it's the end of the third quarter once again. Nothing in it. It's 10 goals to 8. Royal have fought back from a 5 goals to 2 deficit at the end of the first period and have really stamped their authority on this game. As we talked about, tactical differences from both teams, but St. Thomas is really missing a little bit of firepower, and maybe we'll bring Aiden Tessera and uh, Yumal Bollagala more into the fray in the fourth quarter. The highlights of that third quarter, still some excellent goalkeeping from both goalies. One-on-one, -on -one, of course, this is not a match with the strong Thomian shooting team. There's another example of some great goalkeeper. Perhaps slightly off his line on that, but excellent save nonetheless. Always find themselves in great attacking position with an extra man advantage there. Great awareness of where the goal is and where his teammates are. And, and save for St. Thomas. Great shot just over the goalie's head. Uh, captain finally getting his, getting himself into that scoring position. He'll be happy. Royal College have a two-goal lead, ten goals to eight. Reza, have you got some stats for us? Yes, uh, thanks again to the Papre team for helping us with this fast-scoring game. But Royal College, four goals to St. Thomas's two in this third quarter. Nine shots on goal for Royal, eight shots for St. Thomas's. A 44% shooting percentage in success for Royal and 25% for St. Thomas's. But it just shows that if they put Bulagala back with Guru Singer paired up on the bar, it's going to be a different quarter in the fourth one. Fourth quarter, all or nothing quarter for both teams. This is what we talk about. This is where you empty the tanks, all the strength and conditioning, all the team talk that comes in in the beginning of the season is for this quarter and then the fourth quarter coming up in one week's time. But at the moment, who will get first swim ball? They will have first opportunity on goal. And this is where all the training, all the hard work in the gym, on the beach, in the pool, this is where it all comes down to in the fourth quarter. Who's got the heart, who's got the legs? To see this through, Royal College have a slim two-goal advantage. Is enough? Is that enough to see them through in this 30th Royal R.L. Heyman Trophy encounter? Yeah. Bullagala still on the bench. Must be an injury, otherwise they won't risk this. The uh, Thomian coaching team. Nice swim ball win by Atisha Sentil Kumaran. Trest Anthony's will have to marshal his troops in the absence of the regular skipper. Aiden Tissera also with an added responsibility thrust on his shoulders. The Guru Singer twins, they have experience. Here's Migara. It will be an exclusion. So St. Thomas says, we'll need to work this ball. They've been a bit quick to take the shot in the exclusions. Moving the ball to the bar, Aiden Tissera needs to get out of the way or ask for it and finally it's not a great shot so Aiden Tissera was uh, screaming for the ball free as a bird on that bar and St. Thomas's didn't spot him good drop defense by Royal College they are dripping, uh, dropping Mihin Maniga Sekar the more experienced and calm heads onto that bar to help out his goalkeeper so another turnover two turnovers in quick succession and exclusion for Atisha Sentil Kumaran, who's just come in. And now Anthony's, who hasn't been able to get into any scoring position since that first quarter. Royal have settled really well after they started badly. Migara Gurusinga in the centre forward position. Gets the shot away, but it's into the side netting. The Royal number six pleading to come out of the pool. He's really struggling. Yasho the Vasa again, pleading back, asking to stay in the pool. That's uh, Ranatunga, the skipper, in the number six cap. He's been doing a lot of uh, difficult work at the back there. Dimitri Lien again is also an equal and fast swimmer, capable shooter. So really, you can look to change them up if you need. 
That looks like it might be a penalty because uh, you can't block the shot if you're within one meter. And uh, Royal don't find the back of the net there. That's a, that's a important miss. Could come back to bite them. Number 12 is doing something that he's not supposed to be doing and he's going back to the exclusion zone. So it looks like... He left the exclusion zone correctly. A lot of technical mistakes being made by both players, uh, both teams, I beg your pardon. Mostly by St. Thomas's though, uh, Jehan. They've conceded a few unnecessary exclusions. And uh, Sentil Kumaran, after his goal, he has done so well to save has uh, made him save another penalty. Behind the Katukampala there with a lost opportunity to put another goal on the Royal College team sheet. Looks like it might have been a double exclusion. So he's uh, capped out which means that he can't come back into the game i think that might have been because he played that ball jahan we talked about it earlier he played the ball when he was excluded so that is an ejection foul it's a cynical foul so it looks like the sack from you and then another penalty so it's total three if i remember correctly it's will have to be rested from this game yes you excluded him before you excluded him before i remember that's true let me give me a check again let's go so I think it hasn't been communicated properly to the coaches that there was a double exclusion on him and that's why they think he's only got two exclusions when he's actu actually got three so a bit of uh, confusion here and we apologize to you if you're a little confused at home but water polo is a technical sport it's physically demanding and also requires you to be technically very adept after much uh, discussion i think they've uh, negotiated some kind of uh, truce and uh, arranged galagoto to come back into the pool it's a hard game to play and it's a hard game to ref and officiate as well. A lot happening all the time, a lot of calls, a lot of signals which even uh, the officials struggle to read and record. Opening up for stressed Anthony's, but again really good defensive collapsing by Royal, allowing their goalkeeper Samakirti to only focus on one particular area and he manages to make a good save. Manigasekara driving in, trying to make something happen, and uh, what happens is a goal. St. Thomas's have been leaving Manigasekara unmapped, even though he's swimming well, he hasn't always executed on the, on the finishes, but this time, top left-hand corner, no mistake, Royal have a three-goal cushion, which they'll want to extend on going into the second leg next Saturday. He is a little pocket rocket, this left-handed, this left winger for Royal College. Started off carrying the drinks when he was 13 years old in the under-15 game and really come a long way. Good head on his shoulders, excellent man to depend on when the chips are down. Royal have done a good job of taking the centre man out of the game for St. Thomas's, forcing them to shoot from outside. And they haven't done that successfully. Double marking, sometimes even tri triple marking the centre man. What I like about Mihi Manigasekara is that he's recognized that St. Thomas's don't consider him a threat and he's determined to be one. And he's taken shots when the Thomians have expected him to pass and done exactly the opposite of what the opposition want him to do. It's the quiet players you've got to look out for, uh, Shanaka. <laughs> Jehan was one of them. <laughs> Said very little in the know, pool. I don't know about <laughs> you. Uh, Reza, you may not have heard him from where you were back in goal, but uh, he had plenty to say. <laughs> Just a bit of gamesmanship. I uh, unfortunately was probably the closest to him because all my teammates said, he's your man.
Eden Cicera looking to drive in, looking to draw extrusions, looking for his prop on the top. Looks like that might be a penalty and uh, Guru Singer will break that drought, that mini drought that St. Thomas's is having. It's just four minutes left in the game and hasn't been a lot of scoring from the Thomian end for a while. So Guru Singer will desperately want to get this into the back of the net. Royal need two defenders on that line, but they don't need it because Guru Singer makes it count. He guessed right, but there was too much power on that shot. Guru Singh are showing what a great arm he has and what he can do once you get the ball to him. Well, he's got a great arm and great strength, great explosive strength there, Jahan. But he's absolutely knackered, isn't he? He barely could get him uh, get himself to halfway and he's asked for a substitution as well. So, uh, Royal are winning in that department at the moment. They seem fitter. They seem like they're a little bit more adept in this fourth quarter. Zafar Zainuddin really was the master of taking these games to the last minute. Even with a, a slightly less capable team, he was able to eke out those wins against Royal College. And that is why they had five years of success with him at the helm. But really, things that new coaching staff need to learn, they need to adapt to. And I'm sure he'll be having a word with them before the second leg. Talan Surya gets one of the better passes from... Guru Singh at that time swims away from goal as he needs to do and Royal following up I thought that was shot was too quickly taken St. Thomas is playing like they're behind by far more than the two goals playing with a little bit too much desperation this is only the first leg as Dimitri Lienage bears down on goal and there's no option but to give away that exclusion and the penalty. As a professional foul, he had to make that foul. He attacked him at the wrong side, uh, forced himself to swim right across him and got wrong side so of the goal. Three. So little bits of, as you use that word, Jahan, the gamesmanship that St. Thomas has seemed to be lacking. I think the bench plays a huge part. I think St. Thomas is struggling with a few injuries. Uh, the Royal College have been able to sub in and sub out some of their key players, keeping them fresh and as they restore their three goal cushion. Good change up by Royal College. We spoke about uh, subbing Dimitri Lienage for Randa Ranatunga if he was tiring out. Good to see that the bench is alert and good to see Dimitri Lienage taking these challenges now upon himself. But really, Royal College are doing the hard work, Jayan, swimming this ball up and down this pool and tiring out this Thomian defence. That is really the secret to this goal difference. It's not the skill, it's not the shot strength, it's the hard work that you do before you get here. Kalan Surya. It's a little bit of inexperience on the right wing. They're using him there because of his left hand. But... Uh, the player on the left wing for St. Thomas's needs to get himself in a more dangerous position to ask for the ball. And St. Thomas's College looking for Razzle Dazzle, but it's all Royal on the other side. That's Mean Manika Sekara swimming up to the centre of the pool. Migara Gulsinger could be lobbed if he does. Oh, good awareness by that goalkeeper. Excellent stuff there by the Tomian goalkeeper. Good water ball all around. You've got to really appreciate it, whichever school you are supporting. Good skills on display. Another loose bit of passing for Randa Ranatunga to lap up quickly. And Samakirti will be in no hurry now. A three-goal cushion in a game of this intensity is quite substantial. And Vanika Sekara will try to make amends for the earlier laps. And he does exactly that as an interesting celebration as well. Yes, again, another quiet man goes about his business, does the job for the team and then off to the next job for him. I'm not sure it's a tactic, Jahan. I think he's just too quick for his marker. Thirteen goals to nine. This is a fairly substantial lead, especially given 
that St. Thomas has shot into a 5-2 lead early on. It has been all royal since then. It is a concern to see uh, Yumal Bollagala not uh, playing a part in this game. He's got a heavily strapped knee. And a lot of the uh, Tomian players seem to have uh, their right shoulders strapped. Which means that they've been doing a lot of shooting practice. As St. Thomas has called a timeout for the last roll of the dice in this second, uh, in this final two minutes. Jahan, you've coached. What do you say to St. Thomas is here? Settle it down. Just get one goal back in and then see if you can get a second. Not a lot that the coach can do from here. All the work's been done in the four, five, six months leading up to this. Just make sure that there is some damage limitation that can be done. Salvage a goal or two. Make sure Raul don't uh, can see, uh, Raul don't score any more goals. But once again, losing possessions in Thomas's and gifting an opportunity back to Raul College. Good defence by Dimitri Lienage to earn his team that turnover. Again, Royal doing the hard yards at the back of this pool and then giving their goal scorers maximum opportunity. As we have extra man situation. Two Royal caps on one, Thomian defender. This needs to be a goal. It is! Royal College go up one more. St. Thomas's will be wondering what they did wrong in this, in this game after leading so comfortably in that first quarter. I think they just left too much in the pool in that first quarter, Reza, that's the answer to that. I don't think there's anything technical. There is a big difference between the two sides. I think it's just a case of swimming fitness. And also, Royals seem to be playing more as a cohesive unit. They seem to be distributing the ball a lot more. Uh, whereas St. Thomas's will feel the lack of Lomar Bolagola not being in this side so really that's something to look forward to in the second leg because he he is an x-factor player he can really make a difference in that second leg just 50 seconds left on the shot clock it's been a remarkable turnaround for for Royal College from the first quarter and also from last year where they got thrashed by St. Thomas's College and within a year to turn things around a lot of credit to the coaching staff of Royal College it could have been much worse if this man hadn't been uh, spectacular in goal today. Last 30 seconds and it will be the last possession of the game. Can St. Thomas's get to double figures and go in with just a four-goal deficit into the second leg? Four goals makes a bigger difference than five goals and they can. Royals still have time to score another. As Migara Gurisinga finishes what he started. In Tisara with a lovely lobbed ball. They haven't got the ball into Tisara's hands often enough in this game. Ill discipline will cost you. It is a game of goals and it is a game of seconds. Royal College really need to look back on that. I know they're tiring and it's easier said than done, but really the more disciplined team will walk away with the Heyman next week. Yeah, sure, the Vasagle calling a timeout. Just 20 seconds on the shot clock, on the game clock left. He wouldn't want St. Thomas's to score a goal. He'd want that four-goal cushion going into the second leg. Three goals. You never know what could happen with three goals. Well, four goals is enough of a psychological advantage, but three goals is nothing, Jan. But somehow the difference between three and four makes the mountain a little harder to climb for the Thomians. But they have been uh, well and truly beaten in this uh, first leg of the Heyman. Fortunately for them, it's only half time. And it'll be a race to get Yumal Bullagala fit for that second leg. I'm sure he will be fit, which is why they're resting him for this one. Because if it was a do-or-die battle, he'll jump into a 
cauldron of painkillers and still play, I'm sure. 20 seconds remaining on the game clock. Royal College looking for the right wing, right bar. I'm sure it will go into double prop position. They need to get Jason De Silva in the game and run the Ranatunga. Good defence by St. Thomas College. A spectacular move from... Oh dear, that's a bad call from the Thomian team. It's a, a little known rule. But the Thomian coaching team have called a timeout when they didn't have possession of the ball or perhaps when they were out of timeouts. So this may restore that five goal cushion that Royal will be quite happy with to take into the second leg and Dimitri Lienage does exactly that and the Thomians have only themselves to blame for conceding this five goal lead to take into the second second leg of the R.L. Heyman trophy encounter. What a game by the Reed Avenue boys and what a game for the coaching staff. It's not easy to be on the receiving end of either of these games but really we've been treated to an excellent game of by both schools and credit to St. Thomas's and Royal College for enthralling us through this first leg. Gurusing has no option but to try a shot from halfway. Randa Ranatunga does the same. But that brings us to the end of the first leg. Royal will be very, very happy with that recovery compared to where they found themselves at exactly this position last year. A five-goal cushion is more than they would have liked. I'm sure if you offered Yasuo the Vasalage and the rest of his team a two-goal cushion at the end of the first leg, they would have taken it. Instead, they have five. And this vociferous royal crowd have certainly have plenty to cheer for. Plenty of uh, talking points. I hesitate to use the word controversy, but certainly talking points for the coaching team and the referees in the course of this next week to iron out, make sure they get all those technical issues correctly. And St. Thomas's have uh, plenty to do in the training pool as they come back to try and bridge this gap. Interesting as the teams congratulate each other. The bench of uh, both teams are going to be key and they've already been key in the first leg. And St. Thomas somehow need to get that bench into the game in the second leg. But so far, well done Royal College. Resting a five goal advantage going into the second leg. And St. Thomas has have, have some homework to do we look forward to seeing you next week next Saturday 7th for the second leg of the Royal Thomian Dr. R. L. Heyman Trophy Encounter as the Papra team have been working overtime to give us these statistics for the first leg it reads Royal College 15 goals to St. Thomas's College 10 goals Shots on target for Royal College 30, for St. Thomas's 31. That's a, a, a shooting percentage of 50% for Royal College and 32% for St. Thomas's College. Penalties are 5 and 4 for Royal College and St. Thomas's College. And saves by the goalkeeper 14 for Royal College and 10 for St. Thomas's College. These are the highlights from that fourth quarter. Royal College dominant with their swimming, getting into great shooting positions, not converting all of them, but doing enough to completely outplay the Thomians. Good passing uh, by one one-on-one -on -one passing between the Royal College attackers. Wanika Sekara really exposed St. Thomas's swimming speed on that left wing. And Vinuda uh, Sivali Gurusinga, Jahan, you have uh, some plaudits for him. Yeah, the St. Thomas's goalkeeper keeping them in the game and the stats for Royal, uh, 15 goals to 10. Shot clock the same but the conversion rate, 50% of the shots uh, taken by Royal College to 32% by St. Thomas's being the difference even though St. Thomas's won three of the swim balls. And look at the saves by the goalkeepers, 14 by Royal College, 
and 10 by St. Thomas's and the penalty count, 8 penalty is conceded and some of them technical penalties which really didn't need to be conceded. Yeah, that's very silly on the part of uh, St. Thomas's, uh, Jahan. They, there were penalties that could completely have been avoided and uh, unfortunately for them they were not able to uh, do that. We'll come back uh, into uh, the second leg of the Dr. R.L. Heyman Trophy Encounter with the Papare.com next week on the 7th from Reza Ghani, Jahan Mubarak and myself, Shana Kamra Singer. It's good night from Sukhita Dasa. Catch me howling at the moon